In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Abba, Manishtana. Translated from the Hebrew, it means, Father, why is this night different? Perhaps you've attended one, or perhaps you've been to a Monday Thursday Seder service yourself, and you heard this question being asked. The question that is asked in the Jewish faith on this night is as relevant for us here tonight as it ever was on that first Passover night. What are we commemorating? What is it that we are celebrating? This night was a night that was different for the Israelites since ancient times. It was the first night of the Feast of the Passover. And we heard the reading from the book of the Exodus. When God kept the divine commandment, when God placed the divine commandment before his people, telling them that they should observe this festival throughout all generations. They shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. See, on this night, as we know, we know the story of the Exodus, how God acted in human history to bring freedom to the oppressed forebears of the Hebrew people. We all heard God's specific instructions in the reading. On this night, God's chosen people are to recall the gruesome violence of that night as the angel of death swept over Egypt and how God had mercy and protected the Israelites who had marked the lintels and the crossbeam of their doors with lamb's blood. And he had commanded them to retell their children and their children's children how their ancestors, who as people of God, ran for their lives under the fire and the cloud of God's own protection as the Egyptian army followed them in hot pursuit. How the waters of the Red Sea miraculously parted to ensure their foremothers and their forefathers safe passage out of Egypt. And then reconnected, drowning the Egyptian pursuers, the entire army of the Pharaoh. This tradition of retelling this sacred story, we have inherited also. We observe in our liturgy this God-mandated instruction. We claim this biblical truth to be our truth also. But we do so with an important difference. You see, we are privileged people. Through the cross, we are privileged to add an important chapter of redemption, the remembering and the retelling the account of our own salvation. And so, this night is indeed different from all other nights for us. This is the night that Jesus the incarnate Son of God, observed this Passover with his disciples, commemorating the saving deeds that his Father had, com had accomplished for his chosen people when he liberated them from slavery, leading them to a place where he made a covenant with them. And the covenant was that they would be his people and he would be their God. But here's the thing. After they were liberated and taken out of slavery, the people of the Hebrews, God's chosen people, still needed saving. Despite the fact that they had a covenant with God, they kept breaking that covenant. 
And so this very night, O Lord, we institute a new covenant, one that will stand with his people throughout the ages in his body and his blood to save us from our sins. On this night, we remember that not only did he become human as we are and live the perfect life that we could not, he also took our punishment upon himself and declared his commitment to die in our place so that through his death and resurrection and receiving the most holy sacrament of the altar, his body and blood, that sacrament of immortality, he instituted for us and the whole church universal on this night something in which our faith is strengthened, our souls are fed, and we are given the assurance of eternal life with him. So yes, indeed, this night is very different from all other nights. For generations, people have seen bread and wine raised in the Jewish setting in the Sabbath blessing, raised to a great and faithful God. But on this night, things changed. On this night, the same bread and wine became the body and blood of a Lord whose death gives life. This sacred offering becomes a new act of sacrifice. It becomes a new act of redemption. Make no mistake, this atoning body and blood of Christ, it gives life in a very different way. It does not destroy other children of a loving God. I have always had a problem with it. Were all the Egyptians evil? Were they, did they cease to be children of one God? That's what our Lord came to change. Yes, this is a very different night. On this night, we gather to give thanks for the blessing of a God who forgives all of us, who redeems, restores all of us and calls us to join with him, to partner with him in the creating act of making all things new. But that's not all either. On this night, we also talk about Jesus' commandment to love. And we consider once more the models that he left us. On this night, we remember how he took old, familiar things and gave them new meanings for the first time. Of course, we know that foot washing has simply been a kindness to barefooted or sandal-wearing travelers after walking for hours on hot sand and rock-strewn paths. But on this night, it was not simply that. On this night, it became a symbol of divine love and service, expressed in kindness to others. And these, my friends, these, my sisters and brothers, are the marks that define for us why this night, why this Holy Thursday, this Maundy Thursday night, is different from all other nights. This night, when Christ told his disciples to love one another as he loves us, we are called to renew our commitment to that difference. But our Lord intends it to be for us much more than that. Much more than simply gathering together for services of remembering. We are called this night to carry his touching, his healing and his transforming message to a hurting world. A world that so desperately needs, no, that yearns for his grace. Jesus is calling us to continue his great legacy of his love and to keep it alive by finding new ways to wash feet, new ways to nourish bodies and to give comfort to people who are in suffering and pain. On this night, our Lord calls us to be Healers, cleansers, hearers, blessers, teachers, and proclaimers. All of us renewed by the presence of his body and his blood within us, given to us in the most sacrament of the altar. His love impels us to care for the poor, 
and to administer these sacraments and to live in the midst of God's people with integrity and humility for all God's children. All. And so Abba Manishtana, yes, this night is the beginning for us of a journey. It calls us and sends us in a way that never is easy. And our Lord didn't promise it to be easy. We know that. But the divine imperative of this night is that no matter what, no matter what the world's response may be, there is nothing it can do to stop Jesus working in you, working in me. Working for the furtherance of Christ's love and his work of redemption of the salvation of this world which was his pleasure, which he, which he pronounced when he saw it was good. Yes, on this night, the Lord promises that he will be with us always, empowering us, loving us to the end. And if we question which end, it was not the end of the Sabbath meal. No, we know that. It was not the end of his death. We know that because there's Easter not even the end of our lives, because we know that afterwards we are with him. Yes. But the end to the one for whom there is no end. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. So on this night, my beloved in Christ, let us recommit ourselves to his new covenant. For after all, nothing else really matters. Nothing. 